Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Hopefully everyone's coping okay with the current pandemic. Um, we have just gone into another lockdown in New Zealand here because we've had another cluster. Still don't really know where it came from, um, but we're just at home and just doing stuff at home now, which is why I thought it's a good time to actually tackle this particular job. So what are we doing today? So I just want to show you around the AMG. It's looking pretty good. I've had... Um, a bit of time to clean it up a bit and uh, do some waxing on it as well which is really nice uh, but if you have a look at the rear parcel shelf or the rear parcel tray it's looking pretty purple it's a bit faded from the sun um, which is pretty common on these old cars so I'm just gonna be tackling that today um, I've already had a go at doing it on my Alpha on the GTA and it's um, really really straightforward so I thought I should make a video about how to do it on the AMG as well so you'll see the first step that you want to do is to remove the rear seat, um, the, the bottom of the rear seat down here. Uh, you'll actually find the battery on these cars just under the rear seat, which is pretty cool. And it's pretty straightforward to do. Um, all you need to do, I'll show you over here on the actual rear seat. Uh, there's two clips on the side here. You can see here, there's a little clip. So what you do is you just reach your hand down and all you got to do is just pull this little lever, this little white lever, and it'll release the clip, and you'll be able to get the seat out. You got to do it on both sides, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward to do that, and then you can take your seat out. Okay, so the next step is to remove these three bolts at the bottom of the seat. So you see one here, right there, and then there's one in the middle here, between the seat belt buckles. And then one obviously on the other side as well so we're going to remove those three bolts and then see what we do next okay so after you remove the three bolts you basically just have to lift up the whole back seat and it should just separate out there's a couple of clips at the back there and then you can just feed it through um, the middle seat belt and get it all out all right next we're going to pull this piece of trim up so that we can get rid of this side pillar trim here so it's just held on by a few clips. There we go. It's pretty straightforward. I really don't like working with interior trim, but this time it doesn't seem too bad, to be honest. So just give it a go. And then for this piece here, the trick is to remove the rubber, the, the little seal here. It's not really rubber, but it's, it's rubber underneath. Um, and then you can actually pull the top bit, uh, sorry, pull this bottom bit off first. You don't want to pull the top bit off first because I did that on the other side and it broke the clip. This is why I hate doing interior stuff because every time I do something, I always break stuff. Um, but yeah, you want to do it from the bottom first so that you don't break the clip on the top. Okay, so this is what it looks like. There's a long piece of trim there and then you've got the rubber separated from the actual uh, mount here. Looks like everything's in really good condition, which is great. Um, and then this is the little clip that you do have to be quite careful about. So try and pull it down because this clip slides up into the bracket. So try and try and just pull it down. Um, don't try and just force it off like this. All right, next you'll just want to unhook the sound deadening material. There's a whole bunch of little hooks here. And um, all the way across the seat, looks like there's about four. So you just want to pull it up a little bit. Oops, sorry, there we go. And then that'll reveal the access holes. So you want to do all of these. No, oh, I have to go on the other side. But yeah, that'll basically reveal all these access holes at the back here. All right, next we're going to take out the headrests. So you will notice that on the headrests, there's this little plastic uh, trim. Oops, sorry. Sorry, it's a bit tight back here, so it's pretty hard to show you. Um, so there's that little plastic trim. So what you need to do is you need to go into the access holes that you've just revealed and pinch these two bits of plastic together. You see, you see that there? Sorry, it's not really focusing. But yeah, you'll need to pinch those two pieces of plastic together and then you can uh, move the trim out of the way. 
All right, so we've got those plastic pieces out and they're just dangling, so you just want to pull them up. And then apparently all we have to do is pull on this lever or something to release the headrest. So let me give that a try and then I'll come back and show you how I did it. Okay, so here's a little tip. So when you push the lever, there's actually two levers, one for each side of the headrest. So there's one over here, you can see, you can just see it over there, there's a black lever there, you've got to push it, and then there's another one over there. What you do is don't pull up on the headrest like I was trying to do, you want to push it back, because that's how it's mounted, it's actually, um, uh, the rod is actually going in this way. So push it back, and then you should have it out, I've got one out already, so you just got to do that. Oh, what an achievement. I got all the headrests out. Man, that felt like it was a lot harder than it should have been. And now, we just gotta remove this little seatbelt trim. Like that, it's pretty, it just clips on, so it's pretty easy. Sweet. And then I think we're almost there. All right, next we had the seat pillars to remove. So basically, you just put your hand through the seatbelt gap, and then just pull pretty sharp upwards and you've got little three little clips here Oops, sorry about the light there we go three little clips there so those pop up pretty easy but then there's also this little clip on the inside here that you have to be quite careful about so make sure um, what you do is you, you pull it up after you unclip these kind of up and out don't try and force it because um, these are pretty weak and you should have a little clip sitting up on here as well come on camera focus yep, there you can just see it there's a little clip there so make sure that's there as well and it's in good shape and that's what the inside of a c-pillar on an e55 amg looks like so now um, apparently we can just lift up the parcel tray and final step <laughs> which is actually a bit of a challenging one um, Mercedes has decided to use these really interesting trim bolt, trim um, screws I guess you could say where you have to push in the middle of the screw in order to release it so just try and push it all the way through you might be able to even pull this pin out I'll give it a go Right, finally got the parcel tray loose um, you want to just unclip the tail light there as well um, I'm going to suggest you do it from the boot because otherwise there's not much room and hopefully the tray will come out Alright guys, a uh, bit of a boo-boo moment here, which is again why I don't really like working with interior stuff. So I tried to take this uh, brake light out, and it just kind of shattered <laughs> on me while I was trying to pull it out. Um, so I might try and glue that together, and if it doesn't look very good, then I might just try and get a new one. Um, so definitely be a little bit careful when trying to take this out. And the other thing I did was I didn't remove this plug. So try and make sure you remove this plug. It's literally just a press fit. Um, there's nothing, no tabs or anything to press. You just pull it out and then it just, it just pulls out pretty easy once you undo this plug. So yeah, don't make the same mistake that I made. Yeah. Anyway, so this is the parcel shelf. It looks pretty damn old, like you can see. Um, it's faded pretty bad. I mean, this is probably more of the original color uh, and then on the outside here, you've got lots of purple and grey, which is pretty old looking. So we're just going to recoat the whole thing in black. And it should come out pretty nice. See the results? Um, I am actually going to be painting it inside today. I was doing it um, outside with the GTA parcel shelf. Uh, but I found that uh, there was quite a bit of um, dust and other particles that kind of blew onto the parcel shelf. So. I'm going to try this one inside and see how it goes. Okay guys, here's a little tip. Um, when you are cleaning up interior trim like this, it's actually a really good idea to use some masking tape because the tape is just going to lift all of the crap off the parcel shelf. So don't try and use anything else. Don't try and wash it or anything. It'll probably damage it. So just use some masking tape. Get as much crap off of it as possible. You can see all this crap inside here as well in the speaker, in the, sorry, in the headrest compartment. Um, and so this is just a really useful way of getting rid of all that old dirt and old crap. Alright guys, we're going to do our first coat 
right now. Show, show them what product we're using, George. It's the Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric Specialty Coating. There you go. And it tells you to shake it for, I don't know, about two minutes. And then uh, just try and do like a light, consistent pattern as your first coat. Don't expect it to be like perfect on the first coat. <laughs> Alright, here we go. First coat. Try and make sure all the edges um, are done as well. Yep, just nice and light. Don't expect it to cover the whole thing on the first coat. But obviously, you know, try and do as much as you can on the first coat. Just getting familiar with the... Spray pattern, yeah. With the... Yeah. Looking better already, George. Put it up and trade me. One careful owner. Never thrashed. Check it out, this is after the second coat and it's already looking so much better. Um, there's a little few patches here and there, but usually we find that um, when it dries it becomes a lot better and it becomes less patchy. But I'll put on one last coat before we go. So yeah, definitely recommend this product. Um, we have to get a new can because the other can ran out because I've been using it a lot. But that's all good because it's actually pretty cheap. It's on sale for fifteen dollars New Zealand this weekend, just coincidentally. So that was pretty good. Yeah, looking way better. And there you have it. That is the final third coat, third and last coat on. And now it is time to just wait for it to dry. I would recommend waiting about ten minutes between the coats, even though the can says that you can just do it straight away. But you might as well wait and coat it properly. And I think probably about 30 minutes before it's dry to the touch. So yeah, looks pretty good, huh? And then it's just a matter of putting it all back in. Uh, there's a little bit of rust around the fuel tank that we need to treat as well. So I'm going to do that while we wait for this to dry. And then it should be all good to go back in. Awesome, so everything's back together. And check out the end result. Oh, look at that. Yes, very nice, isn't it? Just looks like a pretty new car, doesn't it? If you look at it from the outside. Yeah, it's like so much better than it was before. So there you go, there's a little cool repair or a little mod that you can do to make your E55 look like brand new again. See you next time on the next episode. Bye.